guys, it's Biggs. Now, I just got back. I just got back from Cleveland, Ohio, just yet the other day. And uh, man, uh, what an experience. I was, I was one of the few honored people that was included as a speaker for the Ohio Cichlid Association's 25th anniversary extravaganza. These guys pulled out all the stops. This was absolutely one of the best, well, most well-organized shows I've ever been a part of. I was absolutely floored. Now, I had an amazing time. I got tons of amazing footage for you guys. I went out a few days early. I spent a couple of days at the Ohio Fish Rescue with my good buddy, uh, Big Rich, and his son, Josh, and Tracy, and we did all sorts of stuff. We did some crazy stuff. Some worked out, some didn't, but I hope I'm gonna have that footage for you guys shortly because I gotta go back on the road. Once I go back on the road, that means editing time. So. Uh, that's one thing. I also got to spend a lot of time with my one of my best friends, Mr. Jonathan Straczynski. I'm going to give you a couple of things, a couple of tours and some videos of stuff of his place. And then just some general shenanigans and things that took place at the show. I also was able to get in a couple of interviews at the show with very, very specific people of things that have been set up a long time in advance. So all in all, I can't, I can't say it enough. That show was an amazing time and I had an amazing week until I got to the airport. And so today, on Into the Mind of Madness, with Biggs, the madman, the mad aquarist, we're going to talk about my experience and what happened when I got to the airport. Now you can see out the windows that winter's in full force here already for us. The farm's all put to bed. It's out, most of it's out there. You can't really see make much out in the video, but at least you can tell it's white because it's everything covered in snow. Now we're up where I live. Uh, we, we very, very often in the wintertime go far colder than it is able to snow. <laughs> now most people don't not comprehend that, but we go down to minus 45 on the Celsius scale quite regularly. And once we hit below minus 20 or so, it's too cold to snow. So what you see right now for the amount of snow we have outside, that's pretty much all we're gonna have for the winter. People often think in Canada, we have these big hills and stuff. Not very often do we do, not least where I live. I live in the prairie and this is one of the colder areas. Uh, it's barren, it's cold, it's windy. It's no fun, nobody should ever live here. But this is where my beautiful wife and my family are, so this is where the Biggs lives, and he loves it. He's great. Now, when I, uh, it's, I'm going to first make, make a very, very clear and, and precise statement. What I'm going to talk about is, yes, it's a rant, but this is 100% my fault. When you're traveling and you're using an airline or something like that, when you're traveling, it's up to you to know the rules. And I chose to avoid those rules. Now, I know the rules have changed recently. But uh, there's no way around it. There's no solution for it. I'm not sure what to do uh, going forward for bringing in speakers into Canada that often travel with fish for the Aquarium Society and stuff or traveling with fish, bringing them home. I'm not sure of the workaround. Now, well, here's, here, we'll digress and we'll go back to what happened. At the show, I, was, I have a ton of amazing friendships that I've made over the years. And I got some amazing fish. Mostly of them, most of them were given to me. And uh, it absolutely broke my heart as to what happened at the airport. But uh, I received from Mark Chalupka, a dear friend of the OCA, tireless worker, the guy that sets up most of the fish room and everything that, and spends the whole time in the fish room the whole weekend of the show. He gave me a group of 10 Oscura Heterospila. As you can see, it's an absolutely stunning Central American cichlid. It's one that I just never had, never worked with. They're available and I can easily order them but uh, I wasn't able to get them back. Uh, Jonathan Straczynski sent home a group of uh, Natropolis nematopus, which is a wonderful, wonderful Central American cichlid. And those were destined for a couple of friends up here in Winnipeg. Uh, and those, got, those didn't come back. Uh, what else? There was an extremely rare pair of live bears uh, I got in the auction, uh, Zephophorus nigrensis. Uh, I'd be basically a handful of people in North America that would even have this species alive, and they come from the Rusty Wessel Fish House. Uh, I purchased a group of eight uh, Amatitlania nanolateus, which is a beautiful uh, bright yellow convict type cichlid. Uh, I, I've had them before, but I just wanted to have them again. Uh, somebody had them for sale, so that was literally the only fish that I actually bought. And, and the biggest heartbreaker out of all of those or, uh, is, the, is the last one. And I, I was absolutely honored to get a group of Dankilia species sucre, which is a very, very uncommon crater lake species. 
And I was not only that, but I was able to get very, very few people have seen the fish, very few people have even kept the fish, and this is globally. Uh, and Debbie and Tom had, had graciously given me seven of them. And no fault to them whatsoever. This might actually have been the one that was my downfall because instead of normally me transporting back little quarter inch to half inch fish in little breather bags or what I often use is I often use pop bottles or the metal insulated, uh, uh, those little steel insulated water bottles, I've often used those. But I've never normally ever brought back more than one or two little species and they're minuscule. And then I throw all my uh, computer chargers and phone chargers and all that electric, all that extra stuff into the bag. And I guess maybe when it's x-rayed, it doesn't show up because they're just minuscule and there's all this other interference of stuff wrapped around it. Whatever, I don't know. But bottom line, uh, those ones being seized was an absolute heartbreaker for me. Uh, it's, there's very few people that have them. Now, the rules for traveling within the states or even out of the states you're governed by the TSA, which is the is a, for the US, that covers all their airlines. This is not an airline rule. Air Canada may have specific rules, which is an airline that I use. WestJet is another line that I may use. And WestJet's partner would be uh, Delta, and Air Canada's partner would be United. And each one of those carriers could have their own rules. It's not to say you can't ship fish cargo. You definitely can, but I didn't organize cargo, and I didn't take care of that. So that, again, the fault is 100% on me. But uh, I looked at the TSA rules afterwards, and it was kind of ironic because uh, James Decker, an artist, and Pete, and a bunch of people that I knew that were at the convention with us, they were traveling back with fish, and they had to know the rules of to what way to go. And I'm very, very thankful that they were following the rules, and they checked into how to go about doing it. And I believe uh, artists actually even went and bought another piece of luggage to make sure she can get them back. But the problem being is the rules that apply for them to follow the rules legally for them work within the states. My problem is they won't work as soon as I cross a border and I'll tell you a bit why in a second. Now, in the states, you are allowed to carry tropical fish on as carry-on. So your water volume in your bag can exceed the normal water volume or liquid volume that's allowable for any liquid you bring onto the plane in your carry-on. You just have to show them to the TSA agent. I recommend, and both of them had the same experience, I recommend that you download the information from the TSA onto your phone and have that information because not everybody's gonna be well informed about carrying tropical fish on a plane, especially when you show up with a bag at the, at the, at the gate check. Now, so you can carry them in in your carry-on, I'm assuming within limited numbers, and that's where they went, Art Artis and James went and bought a small little piece of luggage and did that. And they were able to get through no problem. But it very clearly says in black and white, no to live fish in your check luggage. And that's the rule that Biggs broke. And that's, he's 100% in the wrong, nobody else. There's no argument about it. I was the one that did it wrong because I didn't know the rules. But the heartbreaker is, is when I go to check in, I checked in my luggage, no problem, got my ticket, got my seats, and I, my gate is a small plane, it's only a half hour flight going from Cleveland to Toronto, and then from Toronto I go home. And uh, my, my gate was probably almost an hour's walk to get there. Now I was early, but my gate was a long, long way away. It may as well have been in a basement with a little pool chain light to you know, far away it was from the main, main area. I just sat down after finally getting there and my name is paged over the intercom. Now I already know basically what's wrong. So I, I can't say it's 100% it's fish, maybe it's a weight, I don't know. I just know something's wrong. So I actually had to shuttle down one of those guys in the shuttle so I didn't have to walk the whole way back. He brought me all the way up to the gate. I had to leave security, I had to go through back to the gate and they immediately told me the problem was that I had live fish in my luggage and that wasn't allowed. And then they asked me what I wanted to do with the fish. Well, I only had one option really. It's either there was only two options. Either they're, they, they're, they're, they're going to destroy the fish automatically, or my thought was get my bag back, get the fish. They're in a cooler, but there was other things in that cooler as well. Get the cooler, and then I can coordinate with Jonathan or somebody local that can just whip by and pick it up. Now, Jonathan was going to be jumping off a good friend Pete in about half an hour's time at the airport or an hour's time at the airport. He could have easily come and picked it up from somewhere. No problem, no questions asked. It would have been easy to do. So that's the route that I went. I knew that I was actually putting myself in a position where I was getting very, very close on time to even make it back to the gate, but the fish were, were far too important to go that route. So I asked for my bag back and I says, I'll take care of it. 
And I waited probably 35, 40 minutes before my bag appeared. And I went to open up my bag and I pulled it down, found a nice little area out of the line because there's lots of people there. And I open up my bag and the cooler's in there, but it's empty. They'd already taken all the fish out of my bag. They'd also messed up everything within my bag and I had some delicate items that were in there. Now again, you know, it's security, so I understand if they're, you know, they're quick and that sort of stuff. They're not intentionally trying to break anything, but there was some damage to things. And I can't say if anything else is missing. I don't really, really know. But bottom line is the most important thing is the fish were gone. So I went and asked about the fish and she says, oh, I'm not sure what, where they are, what to do or anything like that. Now I'm running really close on time. It's either A, I'm gonna miss my flight entirely and there's no chance that I, no guarantee that I can get on a secondary flight. So after even a couple of minutes of asking about where the fish are, what am I gonna do about the fish? I basically opted out and I said, I have no option. I have to just go to the gate and go on my plane and go on my way home and story to all the little fishes. But that's what I had to do. But not even giving me the option uh, that's that's completely not fair. Those fish's lives could have been saved. I know two out of at least two, possibly three out of those five or six species were care species, meaning these are species that are critically endangered and they rely on aquarists such as myself to, to, to spread these things around and replicate them. Now the problem, other problem being is on, uh, for me to get these fish, even if I did get them to Canada, if I were to take and say use the US and follow the rules using TSA and take them as carry on, as soon as I got into Canada, I would not be able to fly from Toronto to Winnipeg because they don't have a policy like that for live fish within Canada at all. Can that would have to be in your check luggage and more importantly, it would actually probably have to be shipped. But in Canada, I've never had a problem before where, I have, where I'm transporting very small amounts of stuff that's minuscule or something. Same thing as I've done in the States. Uh, but so the rules in the States won't apply in Canada. So really, basically, if I follow all the rules, I have no option whatsoever other than shipping the fish in commercially, which is, again, poses all sorts of other challenges because I'm not a known shipper. Now, I view these things as, as borderline as animal cruelty. And the odd thing is, this is Monday, November 25th, the day that this happened. And ironically, this is the same day that the, the American president, Mr. Trump, signed in, into, uh, whatever you call, signed uh, into law that animal cruelty is, is a big deal. I can't remember what the legislation or whatever he put it into and stuff like that. Like, well, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> so that shouldn't happen. Uh, we should always be looking out for the welfare of these animals, not just dogs and cats, but fish too. So. Basically, that's where we're at. Biggs is, is still a little bit broken up in the fact that he wasn't able to get some of those fish back. More importantly, Biggs is more upset the fact that uh, these fish were destroyed for no fault of their own whatsoever. They did nothing wrong. Uh, it's completely all on me. But the fact that I couldn't even make it right by giving them out to somebody or having them picked up by somebody, that bothers me even more. So. I don't have a solution for you guys. I says you just got to be careful. Know the rules when you're traveling. Look them up. Find out exactly what you can and cannot do. And that way you know, you'll have less headaches and less stress. So I had an amazing time at the show. But this thing will, it, it always, will, always will stay in the back of my mind as, you know, it's kind of, kind of souring the last bit of the event. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Actually, no, I hope you didn't enjoy this video. This video is a terrible video of a terrible topic. Does it mean it's going to stop Biggs from doing it? Probably not. <laughs> but again, I'm going to go back to what I did before. Like, I transport a very, very small, small amount using a bag, little breather bags or something. But you put a giant fish cooler in your bag that says live fish and you pack it to the pack it to capacity, yeah, you might have an issue. And that's exactly what happened with me. So safe travels, everyone. Take care.